The situation surrounding the Neo Home robot has reached a point where it can't be overlooked. Any more because the amount of hype, confusion, and unrealistic expectations being pushed across. Social media has created an illusion that simply doesn't match the truth of the technology behind it. Neo is being promoted everywhere as a breakthrough humanoid robot, presented as sleek, futuristic, and almost too perfect. Standing just over five and a half feet tall, weighing around 66 pounds, powered by a battery said to last roughly four hours, and even capable of returning to its charger automatically as if it were a living assistant. With its human-like body, functional legs, articulated arms, and hands designed with ten fingers, the company portrays it as a robot that can take over virtually every household duty imaginable, folding clothes, putting dishes away, watering plants, vacuuming floors, organizing messy rooms, identifying misplaced objects, and even retrieving something as small as the television remote. The marketing visuals create a fantasy scenario in which you come home tired from work only to find your house spotless. Everything arranged neatly, and all chores magically completed by this elegant machine that glides back to recharge without complaint. At first glance, this feels like the dream people have been waiting for, especially those dealing with physical challenges or age-related limitations who could genuinely benefit from consistent assistance. Yet the part that shatters this dream is the reality that Neo shown in these glossy promotional videos doesn't truly exist in the autonomous form people assume. Although the robot can already be pre-ordered in multiple color choices and is priced at either a $500 monthly subscription or a staggering $20,000 purchase with priority delivery. What customers receive in return is little more than a promise wrapped in uncertainty. A small, fully refundable $200 deposit secures a place in line. But the only delivery information stated is a vague as expected next year, leaving everyone wondering which year the companies even referring to and whether the robot shown today will resemble anything shipped tomorrow. Interestingly, the issue isn't the high price because early stage humanoid robots are naturally expensive. The true concern lies in what the robot actually can and cannot do. The gap between what the promotional material claims and what independent hands-on testers discovered is enormous. Recent testing confirmed that nearly every action Neo performs in the company's video from holding everyday objects, arranging kitchen items, loading dishwashers, or even walking efficiently through a home is not driven by any sophisticated onboard intelligence but is instead controlled by a person wearing a VR headset on the other side of the connection. The robot's real autonomous ability falls below 10%, and that tiny fraction covers extremely simple and narrowly defined motions. Out of the entire showcase, only two scenes were truthfully autonomous, one in which Neo opened a door and another in which it accepted an empty cup from a user. Every other impressive display was manually directed by a remote human operator. This revelation exposes an uncomfortable truth. The robot's intelligence isn't, yet functioning anywhere near what the public is being led to believe. What makes things even more alarming is that this pattern mirrors a growing trend in the tech industry where companies launch devices with bold promises, such as pins with built-in assistance. Compact AI gadgets, or smart systems only for early adopters to discover the real product lacks most of the advertised capabilities. This widening gap between expectation and reality is why other companies focusing on humanoid robots have been pushing for genuinely. Advanced autonomy instead of leaning on theatrics. Even more concerning is the company's own admission. That Neo features something called expert mode, an option allowing customers to schedule. A session in which a company employee can remotely take over. The robot, when it fails to perform a task. The intent, according to the company, is for the robot to learn through these remote corrections. But what this means in practice is that a stranger would have full access to your home environment through the robot's cameras and microphone. Introducing huge privacy and security risks, you would essentially be consenting to allow someone you have never met to see your living space hear your conversations, and monitor your household. When framed this way, the robot begins to feel less like a companion and more like a rolling surveillance device unknowingly invited into your daily life. On top of these privacy issues, 
Neo faces serious functional limitations. Its compact build restricts how much weight it can carry. Its gait is slow and unstable. Its dexterity remains limited despite the presence of ten fingers, and it can sometimes fall, struggling to stand back up. These weaknesses pose legitimate safety concerns. Dropping fragile items, knocking things over, giving incorrect medication, or mishandling dangerous household tools are risks that simply cannot be ignored. People with mobility challenges or elderly individuals, those who could genuinely benefit from robotic help, cannot. Be placed in situations where the robot might malfunction and cause harm. This is the core reason many experts argue that today's humanoid robots should first be perfected and controlled. Industrial environments long before entering households. For consumers, the dream of Neo being a fully functional household assistant is still far away. And the gap between aspiration and reality remains massive. As a result of these shortcomings, other companies are advancing alternative humanoid designs with far more robust training strategies, larger data sets, and more intensive testing. In this larger landscape, another class of humanoid machines has been progressing quickly. Especially versions built to handle thousands of tasks independently and updated over time through advanced artificial intelligence. Right? Systems capable of learning through demonstration, simulation, and real-world feedback. These robots are being developed with the hope of eventually becoming reliable household helpers, industrial workers, and multi-purpose assistants. Dependent on hidden human operators, but functioning through genuine autonomy as development pushes forward. The contrast between robots that rely heavily on hidden teleoperation and those built with the intention of achieving real independence becomes even clearer, especially when looking at the advanced systems being designed for long-term scalability, durability, and broad task generalization rather than staged marketing. The emerging generation of more capable humanoids is being engineered from the ground up to function without needing a human pilot sitting behind. A VR headset every time the machine is asked to pick up a cup, fold laundry, or open a cabinet. Engineers are building neural networks trained extensively through a combination of real-world demonstrations, high-fidelity simulations, and massive video data sets that allow these robots not only to mimic human movement, but also to refine their own decision-making as they encounter new situations. Instead of relying on a person to guide every small action, these machines are gradually learning the ability to understand their surroundings, calculate safe paths, adjust their arm positions in real time, and complete multi-step tasks with increasing accuracy. This shift is essential because it determines whether robots will become meaningful helpers around the world or remain as nothing more than tech show pieces performing. Choreographed routines that fall apart outside of controlled conditions for companies pushing true autonomy the goal isn't simply to impress with a flashy demo, but to reach a point where the robot can walk around a home or workplace, identify tasks, and complete them without needing outside intervention. This ambition moves far beyond basic teleoperation and calls for an entirely different level of engineering. With sensors that capture depth, movement, and objects in the environment, along with machine learning models that improve continuously through updates. These robots are meant to evolve with time, growing more capable each year. In comparison, machines that depend on remote operators hit immediate ceilings because they cannot advance. Beyond the skill of the person controlling them or the labor cost associated with running them, customers drawn in by promotional videos often fail to realize how unsustainable it is for a company to rely on human operators for thousands of bot units, especially when these sessions require constant staffing training, and secure communication channels. The more a robot depends on teleoperation, the less scalable the business model becomes. This is why robotics companies that aim to dominate the future focus relentlessly on autonomy first, gathering enormous training data sets and optimizing their machines in environments like production lines, warehouses, and controlled testing arenas before moving into the complex unpredictability of private homes. Industrial settings provide consistent lighting, predictable layouts, and clearly defined tasks, allowing robots to train safely and reliably. Homes, on the other hand, are chaotic children running around, pets getting in the way. 
Furniture arranged differently in every house, and countless small variables that change daily. A robot must be extremely well-trained to handle all this. And that level of completeness is something no marketing video can fake once the robot is face-to-face -face with reality. That's why the claims around Neo raise red flags. The robot simply hasn't demonstrated the capacity to operate safely or reliably.